Hi everybody, I'm Tao at MC Square of University of Michigan. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to align the probe corrector on the Thermal Fisher Spectra 300. So before you start, you want to make sure you have the standard cross-graining sample loaded. The sample has to be in the column for more than 30 minutes, so you don't have major drifts during your alignment. Okay, so first, let's check the vacuum. Let's go to the vacuum tab in the TM user interface and let's check here the gun is 1, that's good, liner 20, that's okay, octagon 2, that's okay. So uh, we mainly want to make sure the octagon is uh, less than 10 so that we can open the column safely. So now let's open it. So first we want to load a fag register. So we go to the mono tab and we find FEG registers. If you click this uh, triangle, you get the secondary menu and you go to the file. Then you see now my file is loaded and you want to double check this. If uh, this is someone else's file, you want to think about whether you trust it or not. And um, my suggestion is always to, to click open and go to this uh, supervisor folder. So if it's not in that folder, um, I'll show you where it is. It's in the C drive and under Titan <coughs> data and uh, supervisor. So it's here. I load my fig register tm.feg open. So now these are um, the entries that I will maintain uh, like weekly or bi-weekly. So you want to set my fag register. And it's going to take um, just a few seconds uh, for everything to be loaded. So now looks like it's already loaded. And uh, we see that uh, we don't have beam here. So it, most likely it's the monochromator um, beam crossover is shifted off. To find the beam, let's go to the stem tab and uncheck this stem button. Okay, so now it switches back to the TEM mode. Next, let's use the magnification knob and go to the lowest mag like this. And now let's go to mono and in the monochromator tab, let's click find beam. So the software will try to find the beam for you. Um, basically what it does is, you see here, it's uh, changing the mono shift and while watching the uh, beam intensity in here. So here we go. Now looks like it found the beam. And then we'll try to center it for you. So now it's changing the Y. Still working. Okay, so now it's done. And now let's zoom it back in to like this normal TM mag. And we saw that our sample is still here. And now let's go to the stem and click the stem button. Okay, so now we can see the beam on the flu cam. And now let's go to the VLOX acquisition. Let's select hard if. And uh, now the view is automatically started. Let's zoom out and we can roughly see the sample. Um, let's do a eucentric focus. 
to reset the defocus. Okay, and now let's change the Z button, which changes the Z height, and let's try to make the sample in focus. By doing this, we adjusted the sample to the eucentric height. Okay, so now you can see this cross graining sample is basically a bunch of uh, squares um, with uh, 463 nanometers in length. So this sample is uh, used for magnification calibration. And of course, this is not our purpose today. Our purpose is to align the probe corrector. And uh, we are going to use the gold nanoparticles that are used um, to make these squares. We can move one square roughly to the center of the field of view. And uh, so let's take a look at here. We should be at this magnification. So at this magnification, um, roughly we can have one square uh, centered in the field of view. Okay, like this. Um, now we can adjust the Z height a little bit more so that we get a better focus. And now let's stop. Let's come back to uh, the TM user interface. Um, so as we just found a beam with the mono shift, let's fine tune the mono shift by going to mono and monochromator tuning. Uh, you see I, I turn on the shift and the focus functions. So now focus will be linked to the intensity knob on the left hand panel. The shift will be linked to the multifunction X and Y knobs. So what we have to do, um, let's change the focus counterclockwise. And let's look at the flu cam. And we can see the beam becomes stronger and stronger. And eventually, you start to see the edge of the beam. That means the crossover of the beam in the monochromator is not well centered. Now let's try to center it with the mono shift. OK, let's keep doing it until now we see a very bright spot. Of course, we can see the shadow of the C2 aperture. And let's just center it to the aperture center with the mono shift. OK. And now look at the beam, uh, the screen current. Uh, we get the maximum screen current at this configuration. And now let's set the screen current. For aligning the probe corrector, we want the screen current to be about 150 picoamps. So now let's uh, change the intensity clockwise. So you see the screen current drops down. And at the same time, this number, the focus number, increases. So let's keep doing that. Now we we get uh, 151, so that's good. We don't have to be exactly at 150. So now I turn off the shift and the focus. Next, um, we want to reset some things. Um, first, let's go to the column, and we see the beam setting, and uh, we see this reset beam button. Let's click it. This will reset user uh, beam shift. Next, let's go to the stem tab and let's find STEM auto tuning. Click the flap out and under setting, there is a reset button. Click that. This will reset the stored um, stigmator numbers like condenser probe uh, A1 and probe B2. So now you see these are all reset. OK, so let's uh, keep it at here. And now let's turn on the auto 
alignment uh, software which is this guy so let's click it and it appears on um, it, it appeared on the other screen and I dragged it here so this is how the software looks like if it's open for the first time and uh, you don't have to change anything and just click connect to the corrector software okay and now um, let's click import again it will try to mostly find uh, the probe semi aperture which is convergence angle and we are using the 30 milli rad here and the probe current you see it's uh, it says 10 pico amps and we are using a hundred about 150 but we don't have to change this number uh, because if we put a smaller number here the software will try to push its limit to really get um, a better alignment okay so before we start the alignment let's do one more thing let's go back to the acquisition in the VLOX and uh, we come to here the detector settings and uh, you see the gain offset and we want to set the offset to 43 percent and you can just type for and then set the gain to about 37 the purpose of doing this is to make sure that the corrector software gets enough counts and uh, with these magic numbers the counts is about 10,000 counts which is uh, just okay for the alignment let's pull up the auto alignment software again and let's hit start and now you see it started to um, try to align the corrector for us so from now the process is uh, completely automated and you can just uh, take a rest um, the whole process will take uh, anywhere from like 10 minutes to one or two hours depending on how far off the current status is so let's just uh, wait okay so now it says it's uh, completed and it shows this um, total D50 uh, which is the um, estimated probe size 58 picometer that's pretty good the best way to check if it's good or not is just take an image so let's go back to here um, start an image and zoom in so we can check the focus a little bit okay now let's take an image So as it's, it's taking, you can already see the beautiful lattice showing up. That means our our alignment is probably good. We can tell more information by taking a Fourier transform 
and when you see a bunch of uh, reflections and uh, see this guy is the farthest spots that we can get and if you measure you measure the distance you see that's a uh, 28.53 so you can calculate 2 divided by 28.53 uh, that's uh, 0 0.7 angstrom so uh, that means right now we we have at least 0 0.7 angstrom resolution which is pretty good it should be good for most of the applications Okay, so now you know how to align the probe corrector. And if you have any questions or comments, please leave a message under this video. Or if you are a MC Square user, please send me an email. So see you later.